if you've come to this channel, that means you're either going through a divorce, just went through a divorce, thinking about a divorce, maybe have been divorced, or anything to do with a divorce or a separation of any kind, then this channel is all about that. And right now, we're going to be covering the three main parts of a divorce, which is coping, recovery, and dating. So stay tuned. everyone, this is Rebby Goldwasser and you've come to my Fearless Woman channel where I cover anything and everything to do with divorce. So this is my pioneer video and I really want to dissect the three main components that people go through when it comes to a divorce. I personally went through a very difficult divorce. I left my husband after a 20 year marriage and if some of you have come from TikTok or from Instagram or Facebook, you already know a little bit of my story, but if you are first here to see me here on YouTube, I suggest you check out these other cool channels to learn a little bit more about my journey and really the transformation that I've achieved through my divorce, which is just incredible. And it is one of the reasons why I'm showing up now online for 2020 and on to really empower and inspire you to achieve the same transformation that I went through. Because if I know I can do it, there is no question in my mind that you can do it too. So the three parts of a divorce that if you're thinking about divorce or dealing with divorce, you don't know what the heck is going on. I, I really broke it down to three main parts. And I think this really will help you understand facets when it comes to a divorce. So the first phase, the first prong, the first you know, element of a divorce is what I call coping. Because what happens when you cope with divorce, it's like the truck that hit you from behind that you weren't anticipating. So the coping phase is just almost like survival. It's this instinct that we have, right? The fight or flight mode. You're constantly on. You're either fighting or you're fleeing, right? It's either one or the other. And there's absolute mayhem. There's chaos. I mean, your whole entire world that you've known as a, as a married person. I'm obviously going to speak about the married woman as that's me as a woman. But this really works both ways. Um, but your whole world as a married, uh, fam as a family unit, as a married woman has collapsed, has absolutely shattered in an instant. And this is catastrophic, period, end of story. So if you're coming to this video and you're like, what the hell is happening to me? My, you know, the world underneath me has collapsed. I'm free falling. I don't know what's going on. Ah, perfect. I mean, that's like totally normal. This is exactly what you're supposed to be feeling. And if you're not feeling that, you're, you're going to, because you, you have to really experience this, you know, tremendous breakup that, that, that's happening in your life. It is a life event. It is a loss that you have to cope with, to recover and mourn. And we're going to talk about those five phases of loss that you do have to, to get through. But it is an absolute trauma. Think of you being hit by a truck and being rushed to the emergency. That's coping. You are in fight or fight excuse me, fight or flight mode, you're constantly on. There's the attorneys, the kids, the house, the assets, the pension, the alimony, the child alimony, the community, your friends, your family, the anger, the hatred, the, the drama. It is endless and exhausting. And unfortunately, that is the common uh, story that we all have. I had it. Obviously, there's some people who have it much, 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 much worse. Others have it not as bad, but it sucks. I don't recommend it. I don't condone it. There's no one who gets married that says, oh, goody, you know, I'm going to get married, so I'm going to get a divorce. It doesn't happen. So understand that this is truly a life traumatic event. And understanding that as you're coping with the world, as you know it, collapsing and combusting, falling apart, right? The Maslow's hierarchy of needs, as we know it, the very foundation has just and shattered your safety, security, community, your everything to do with that has collapsed. And that's why this phase is so, so difficult. So we will deal with that on this channel. We will deal with coping, but I'm here to tell you that you're not alone, that you are completely normal and feeling chaotic and feeling crazy and feeling like your world has ended and feeling like you cannot get through it. 
normal, normal, normal. And here's the best news. You will get through it. You will make it. You will become a new person. I know it because I lived it and I got through it. So trust the process. It will happen. You must believe that. I promise you it will happen. Okay? So that's the coping compart compartment. Good. The, the serious stuff, the assets, the, the children, the, the parental custody, all that complicated, difficult stuff, not trauma, the, the, the anger, the emotions, the embarrassment, the shame, sadness. It's, it's, it's a lot. So you're very normal. What I want you to do if you're in this phase and you found me is this. I want you to breathe. You know, there's a way of handling that type of stress. I, I actually saw it on TikTok. I'm, I'm like in love with TikTok, by the way. You guys should check it out. And I have, I have a pretty big following. I mean, for me, who would have thought divorce and, and transformation would be big on TikTok. It's pretty good. I'm around, I think, 8,200 followers as we speak. But... Um, one of the things you learn is all sorts of things. And one of the things I learned is the breathing mechanism that apparently the Navy SEALs use to calm down. And they call that the breathing. Uh, I forget what they call it specifically, but it's basically four breaths in, then you hold it for four counts and release for four counts and you wait for four counts. So it's like this. that I'm just um sorry about that guys thing here bear with me it's my first video on YouTube okay so so bear with me um so if you breathe that way four in four holding four release four nothing again what happens is okay so that's really the key element in the coping phase of the divorce is to breathe and try to relax as much as possible because your emotions are completely wacko, okay? That's that. The next phase is what I call the recovery phase. And in my opinion, out of the three phases, coping, recovery, recovery and dating is the hardest part. The reason why recovery to me is the hardest part is if you are capable of doing it, and a lot of people can't, and I honor everyone not for everyone to do, but for me, it was very, very important why I achieved the transformation that I achieved to a point that I'm now on YouTube talking about it. I mean, let's face it, it takes a lot of huevos to do what I'm doing, okay? <laughs> so the recovery for me was very important because I actually even attack, tackled that right in the coping phase as I was dealing with the divorce because I wanted to understand why I tolerated this behavior. You know, in a couple, there's, you know, and I hate to use these words and I don't want to use these words, but there's always going to be the, the toxic, the angry one, the mean one, the one that created the drama and the one that, and I don't want to say the word victim because I don't believe in those words, but there's the one that kind of dealt with it, sucked it up, cope with it, try to fix, try to save. There's usually that type of a relationship and one of them ends up snapping. So, I was in my relationship specifically, I was the one that always tried to fix and save and solve everything and I walked on eggshells and my husband was just mean to me, mean with his words, he was just really, really mean. So again, this is not about blaming, this is not what this channel is all about, this is about understanding your part in the couple, right? The recovery phase of the relationship, you know, the, the, why it's so critical for us to do it that I want you to see your part in it. Because if you understand that you were part of this toxic relationship, relationship that fell apart of whether he cheated on you or if he was a gambler, if he was a, you know, an alcoholic or a narcissist, whatever it is, usually there's some form of a, a friction, trauma, an issue happening. You're part of it. And to pretend that you're not, to think that it's all him and not you, all her and not me, is just um, immature. It really is. It's immature of you to do that because you're part of the problem. You were married for 10, 15, 20 years and you saw all the red flags and you tolerated, you behaved it, you engaged in it, you were toxic in your own way. So now you have an opportunity to take a step back and say, why? How come? Why did I let this happen? What is it about me that made that happen because 
for the dating component and, and things go well, meeting another great partner, I believe that we all should have great partners and should be in relationships. I love relationships. I love being married. I, who goes into a marriage not wanting to be married? And, and who goes into a marriage saying, oh, I'm going to get a divorce? No one does. So, but if we already got the divorce, right? If we already had to break up the family and, and create the trauma for the kids and go through all that terrible pain, I don't want to go through that again. Hell no, I'm not interested in that. So the only way I know to deal with it is to deal with my crap. And I did a lot of work. That recovery phase for me took several years, but it was absolutely transformational. Like, I'm a different I don't even recognize who I am. My friends don't even recognize who I am. In fact, the friends that I had are down to like four or five. I completely changed everything about my life. And that is one of the things that I'm going to empower and inspire you here on my YouTube channel. Okay, recovery phase, done. The last part, which is the funnest part, the best part, and really the greatest part, which is we get to date again. But heck, now we get to date with a lot more experience, being around the block, and, and hopefully if you're doing the recovery phase correctly, you really know who you are. Because usually what happens if you don't do the recovery phase correctly, you're still coming from a place of lack and a place of neediness and, and, and uh, desperation. And that's why one of the reasons I also do not recommend that the minute you go through that beginning stage of the divorce that you start dating right away. Like people go on Tinder and J-Date and, and, and J-Swipe and Bumble and trust me, I Match. I've done all of them. They were a lot of fun. I really did enjoy them. And they're an amazing mechanism for many of us that have been married for, for 20 years, you know, from our 20s to our 40s. Like this stuff didn't exist when we were dating in our 20s, right? Like Google just came out and I think Facebook just came out 10 years ago, whenever it was. So a lot of the tools available now to date didn't exist. So it's so easy to do. But that's also what makes it almost dangerous because if you're not really addressing the recovery component of who you are as a person, you're going to enter the dating world in such a place of lack and, and desperation and vulnerability that what's going to happen is you're going to attract the predatorial man. Again, I'm speaking from the perspective of a woman, but this can absolutely be flipped. So, you know, I, I don't mean to not include men. I, I get comments on TikTok, you know, you should do stuff for men. And, and I, again, my intention is not to do that, but I'm, I'm always going to speak from the perspective of a woman. But obviously, if you're a guy, if you're on this channel, it already says so much about your interest in self-growth, which is amazing. But just, you know, switch it, obviously. So again, back to the, the element of lack and vulnerability is that you're going to attract a predatorial person that they, they can smell a weak person. You are weak. You're brokenhearted. You're bad shock and it's really easy to get out on the online platforms right the tinder the j date the, the match and meet somebody and you will meet somebody because people want to meet each other the problem is you're not coming from a healthy place you're coming from a very broken space so you're going to attract a predatorial person or somebody who has the same type of turmoil and drama as you, not more and it's just going to be else. So as hard as it is for you not to date, and I know many want to, it is my recommendation for you not to do that because of what may happen. And, and you'll find that you might very quickly fall in love with somebody. Like I knew this one woman who within six months of, of, of her marriage falling apart, married for 20 years to alcoholic, she meets another guy, perfect guy, so different, so amazing married and guess what now two years into this second marriage he's also an alcoholic she ended up attracting another alcoholic and she didn't even know it because you're so blind right the, the when you're in that shock phase and, and trauma phase and you know fight or flight phase and you're dealing with all this chaos you haven't really recovered and you go straight into dating while you're still dealing with that coping you're not going to see what's there you're going to see what you want to see which is a great guy who's crazy about you but not it's also broken so unfortunately that woman is now dealing with another divorce and is just she's heartbroken like completely but now she's learned her lesson and this time she's really work but my goal is for you to avoid that like 
we've already gone through that divorce, guys, or we're going through it, or we're dealing with it, and it just sucks. I mean, there is nothing, nothing great about the divorce. I don't think I've ever spoken to anyone that says, oh, yeah, my divorce was, it was so fun and fabulous and highly recommend it. Uh, certainly do not recommend it. Do the work and, and focus on recovering, and then you can absolutely enter the dating world. So why is the dating part so great? Once you've coped, covered, you're now going to date, and you come from this enlightened space, this transformed space, this space of this is who I am and I'm secure and I'm whole and I'm not needy and I don't need a man to complete me and I don't need a man, you know, to support me and I don't, you know, I can make it on my own and I have a house and I'm working and I'm making money. Yeah, maybe you may not be a millionaire and you have millions and you have to work, but you're managing. You're managing and you're making the money and you're making your money. You've settled yourself in your exercise dating and salsa dancing, doing all these amazing things for yourself that have nurtured you and made you better and stronger, going in with that mindset, date, forget about it. It is so much fun. You are just having a ball. You are meeting great people. You are getting to know them. Some of them are like, forget about you. I don't want to talk to you. Or maybe they don't want to talk to you. Who cares? Because you're not taking personally that you're not going to drama mode. And then you're going to find a great partner. Because like attracts like. So when you're secure and strong and happy and abundant and recuperated, everything is now calm and relaxed. And some normalcy back in your life, that's a great place to date from. So coping, recovery, and dating. I'm going to talk about all of that and everything in between. I'm talking everything in between. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please give me comments. Let me know what else you want me to talk about. I'm so excited to launch my YouTube channel. Check me out on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. And I'll see you hopefully in a week.